Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Riffin' on Benjamin Williams Leader. It uh, was uh, done um, last week. And uh, it's fun. And also, I'm going to be like, uh, at, at a certain point here, when I get into the color and stuff, I'm going to share the reference up. Um, I was doing that for the members area, but I thought, hey, not that I always do that for the members area, but uh, first, I didn't do a premix on the colors here. It was just a little quickie four by six. Um, this time of year, I get the tourist trade and stuff, and so four by sixes are good because, you know, people feel that uh, yeah, they could just throw them in a suitcase, and uh, it's a mini masterpiece, right? There you go. I'm sure someone's already used that term. Uh, we're working on um, uh, MDF, and it's been coated with two coats of transparent gesso with a little bit of burnt sienna in it. We're currently painting with some burnt sienna, it looks like. I may be adding, it looks like, uh, I keep saying it looks like, sorry. Uh, I, well, it was, you know, last week, may as well have been a century ago for this old guy looks like burn number to me yep and uh, I don't look I don't think I went into full out black on this yeah the I really liked the basic composition of a leader's piece um, you the one thing I really didn't didn't like much is where he put those that second mass of trees like sort of close to the main mass of trees and so I thought it'd be better to move that over also, I didn't use his sky. That's that's a sky I popped in. And that sky's got a bit of a C in it. I, I knew I was going to paint that that way. Just But uh, hey, we're going to make your own little study after this if you like. It's all good. And, uh, well, I liked the uh, reflections in the uh, lake, stream, whatever that is. Could even be, you know, a, a flooded field, right? We get that out here in New Zealand sometimes after a lot of rains. You know, the fields go... Uh, and I really should get out with the camera. The problem is with getting out with the camera, a lot of the roads are, you know, not that accessible. I had to pause for a minute to adjust the, uh, the video. Uh, just so you can see that little picture, you know, it's a little floating there, but hey, you get an idea of what I was working from. So why do I say riffing on Benjamin Williams leader, good old BWL? Um, because I just decided to take inspiration from his piece and do my own thing, you know. Uh, that was something I started doing maybe, I want to say, two years ago, uh, here and there. And, uh, you know, why why not there's so many amazing compositions in uh the world of uh traditional painting but i don't necessarily want to do a kind of stuffy old looking painting you know i want to do my thing uh but utilizing the uh the composition of the master so that's the idea behind the riffin and you know in the music world i'm uh, they they do this all the time you know they they do a cover of the of the Beatles' Hey Jude as a polka or something like that, you know. So it's sort of that sort of concept. Um, yeah, feel free to, to do your own riffing, you know. It's all good. Anything you can do to get some more painting done, and hopefully you will be getting a lot of painting done in 2024. I'm hoping that I get a lot of painting done. Um, I've been working very hard on this um, video course. This is the Limited Palette Magic. And it's looking really cool. In fact, the painting that I came up with for it is very good. That was pr maybe one of the biggest problems with the first iteration of the course. Is like, it was just kind of okay. You know, it was a good saleable painting, but we need better than saleable. We need amazing. And uh, maybe that'd be something good to talk about. You know, we're all doing paintings, and some of them are good, and some of them aren't. And uh, what are you gonna do? You know. You want everything to be good, but that isn't the way that life is, uh, and it's okay. I I always uh, advise to uh, my students uh, that the real way to deal with this sort of um, kind.
kind of dilemma is just to do more work and then you won't be that enthused by the last good painting because you're going after the next one you know that that's really the answer to that um, as far as the palette goes on this is my usual palette we're using some phthalo blue that's my preferred blue yeah, I can work with the old alizarin I mean uh, ultramarine <laughs> Uh, and I've had my flings with uh, cobalt. I was, you know, working with nothing but cobalt for a long time. But really before I got into the Thalo, though, to me the Thalo does most everything I could do with the cobalt. It's just cheaper and uh, more flexible, you know. The cobalt does have its own energy, though. Every pigment has its own vibe and energy. And that's one thing about the... Um, that's one thing I think a lot of painters might run into. I mentioned this uh, uh, in the in the course I'm I'm working on now. You know, where I've seen um, you know, students come in, they want to do they want to learn some about oil painting, and they bring in all their paints, and they have this giant like uh, you know paint carry thing. Uh, you know, with 20, 30 tubes of paint. They really they they they've made charts. You know, they've they've done little swatches and things. Of, uh, ultimately they really don't know what to do with all these paints and and what i always say is uh all right we'll put all these aside you know put them in a bag and focus on the main paints until you uh get to know them get to feel them because they all have their own energy they all do their own thing they all have their own properties and these properties are something you can definitely exploit or can definitely be exploited by you know in a bad way you know anyway it looks like i got an ad for the book coming up right here don't see the little type thing but that's okay uh the book yep so so sent out a couple uh this last week i'm so thrilled uh you know sending them all over the world and you can get your very own book it has uh oh pretty much everything i learned about uh, painting over the last uh 13 14 years in there and uh we got a few new wrinkles and the the video courses really complement the book i think because the book is um it's, it's designed to, to to be on the bench and something you can refer to uh where the video course is it's blow by blow and you know me i can't help but uh always work in the phil philosophy uh of painting as well because it's so important. A painting is very much a mental activity. You don't think it's not. Yes, you're physically putting um, pigments onto a board or surface with, uh, you know, in this case, the medium of oil. But uh, there's so many decisions that have to be made. What color, what brush, uh, how, how, how heavy are you gonna apply the paint, you know? Uh, how are you gonna hold the brush? Um, it just goes on and on and on I try to err mostly on the side of not overdoing things not overworking things uh, having a fresh kind of statement and that's really one of the advantages of uh, being a uh, quote-unquote modern artist uh, is that uh, you know there's the real acceptance of more abstract and uh, fresh sort of uh, imagery in the past you know many of the masters like uh, I recommend one day uh, if you can you know uh, pull up old uh, constables uh, sketches for his paintings you know his initial uh, and they're really fresh and modern looking and they're amazing looking uh, I frankly prefer them to the giant six foot things that he ended up doing but back in his day that was you know not that everyone had to do a six foot painting but Back in his day, you know, you were expected to finish things off. Oh, the interesting thing about Constable is he would do giant studies as well. So, like, he would have a six-foot study next to his six-foot painting, right? Very interesting guy and uh, interesting approach. Uh, for my part, I just want to make a little painting. Uh, you know, it's a, this was an exploration of that composition. Uh, I want you to notice I changed that, uh, that whole sea thing in the sky. And uh, well, how did I know that was going to be an issue or a problem? Um, I just do because um, I have a good amount of experience at, at failing. <laughs> And I have to say that, um, oh, there's a lot of ways to fail, but probably the biggest and easiest way to fail is compositionally. If the, the composition of your scene isn't working right, 
Um, and by that I would mean the proportion of the items in the scene, their uh, relationship to each other, um, the spaces between them. And uh, you need to have a care as to how the eye goes through the scene. You know, uh, I, I, I've known this for a long time, but I hadn't really brought it up into my conscious mind, that our eye essentially enters the scene, at least in the West, um, from the lower left. So keep that in mind. Like in this one, we're coming in from the lower left. We're we're going up. Uh, we're going up to the little mass of trees, and we come in. We're lingering on the main mass of trees, the sky holes. You know, one thing I did in this painting, and uh, I think it works, but there's like kind of a hole in the tree masses where I have just blue mountains coming through, and I'm wondering if I should have done something there. But, um, you know, the nice thing, also the great thing about a 4x6, this uh, painting in the members area is, uh, oh, I think it's an hour and 24 minutes or something like that. You can see it come together in real time, 4K, no ads, check that out. But uh, you're getting a lot here too. I mean, this is uh, the 50 minute, I never... Um, I never clip out portions of the painting. I, I, it always annoyed me when I had uh, videos and DVDs that I would buy, uh, where they would just clip out a whole chunk of things. Like, oh, okay, well that wasn't that important here. You know, we know that you don't. I, I would rather speed up the whole video because people can. You can slow. There's a little function here on YouTube where you can slow things down. And if you really want it slow, I mean, uh, six bucks for the members area. That's real time. That's going to be. Uh, nearly glacial but there I recommend speeding that up by maybe one and a half or two uh, you know that's going to be fast enough to hear and understand what I'm saying when I'm saying anything a lot of times I, I definitely in fact I've noticed I'm doing a lot more like teaching in the members area early on but as we get into like say this stage of the painting uh, I'm not saying much because you know so much of what you're doing is based on all the decisions you've made before those are the the earlier the decision the more fundamental it is to the success of the painting you know the 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 smaller uh, things that we're moving around here and yes you can definitely ruin a painting at this stage don't get me wrong you yeah. definitely yeah. can ruin it right now but I don't think at the late stage of the painting you can really make it great you know uh, possibly there are times where you maybe had something that's right in the cusp being great just needed that one uh, that one additional um, thing to be done and you did it and then everything falls together that can happen but more often than not you're just move you're you're just improving it incrementally from um, a certain state so it is what it is almost uh, from the drawing state and then when you start getting those larger fields of color in then it's established. Uh, I thought bringing in these lights here was good. I really liked all that stuff in the reference. I didn't go that route for a couple reasons. One, uh, yeah, it does look like it's a flooded field. So, but uh, too many questions in my mind. I didn't really, what I was more interested in was just kind of indicating that it was a river with reflections and things. And I was content to do that. And uh, content to make my own statement. All seeing is how I, I really like uh, something, a river, a stream, a path. I think it's really good to make it uh, bright up at the top. I just, you know, think that directs the eye. Uh, you know, some could argue, well, what about the reflection of those hills or mountains? Yeah, I don't really worry about stuff like that. In fact, when it comes to, we're at the end of the video, and I hope you're ha gonna have a great new year, if I don't say that. Um, reflections do what you want nobody cares okay just have fun anyway that's it for this video and I appreciate you so much coming around leave me a comment uh, and uh, I hope you and your family are gonna have a, a, a joyous uh, Christmas and a really awesome new year and um, until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment do me a favor do me a solid Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. God bless you and your family. Happy New Year. Fight the power.